Magic Glass Pop here. Today I'm taking a look at an old classic and an old favorite of mine uh, that goes back to 1980. It's Time Tripper by SPI. And it's kind of a cool cover at its age because you see a, a U.S. soldier from the Vietnam era being chased by space police into the middle of a battle um, where Roman legions and soldiers are surrounding uh, our American uh, erstwhile hero here. Uh, the actual game uh, comes on an 11 by 17 map, and I thought I'd give a brief overview of how the game is played without going into all the specific rules of the game. Um, it's not a difficult game to play. Uh, it came out in 1980. I remember actually purchasing this copy in 1980, and I believe I bought it directly from Redmond Simonson, if I'm not mistaken. Um, in any case, and it, back then it was boxed, and it was $8. Uh, a similar game today might go for 25 or 30 uh, with 100 pieces, a small map, rules, charts, and, and boxed. But I digress. Anyway, so you're uh, Timmy Zapp, I believe is his name is. Um, regardless, you're in Vietnam, and you're high on drugs and playing with the radio, and all suddenly you, for whatever reason, get pulled into another time zone, another time, well, it's a time machine actually, and you're off traveling through the past and the future, trying to bring yourself back to home, which is Vietnam, approximately 1975. Now, how you do that is, is you fight several battles, gain experience, get used to working with the radio in its altered state, for lack of a better term, and you try to use that experience in working with it when you go from one battle to the next to finally control the flux, which is the time flux, and get yourself to go back home. Now, this is done on a few displays here. Uh, this is your time displays. This is your past display in the top section of the map. Here you have the uh, future time display. The numbers top number represents the battle number, which corresponds to a chart that lists all the battles that you'll encounter and the parameters of them. Uh, so initially what will happen is you'll buy your load of equipment, and determine your ability to um, um, carry equipment and how that impacts your movement allowance. And you buy all your equipment, not knowing exactly what kind of battle you're going, battles you're going to fight, or what weapons you'll pick up, and what enemies you'll encounter. So you have to be kind of flexible. And as you play the game more, you'll d develop your own style of how you like to play and what works for you. Uh, having purchased your forces, uh, your equipment, and you automatically get a M16 in a single player game. There's room for Nell, Elf, and Skag for a multiple player uh, game. And then you have, like, I believe it's called a Timekeeper, which is like a, takes a, it to the next level and does a role playing aspect to it. Um, they never did come out with a role playing game based on this, um, but it might have been interesting. So this was a standalone that came out. And so anyway, what, what happens is you, as, as the player, will determine on the past time displays where you start. You'll roll a couple dice, and let's see, the red die will be the direction. <coughs> and the other is the distance. So direction two, a distance of two. So looking up here, at the display, direction two, uh, 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 direction two, distance of two takes you to 1778. So I would take a look at the past time display and looking at battle number 21. 21 is the Battle of Monmouth. And the longest battle of the American Revolution was fought between the Continentals commanded by Lee and the British under Clinton. Only Washington's timely arrival saved the Continental Army. As it was, the British 
retired from the field in this inconclusive battle. So it gives you a little bit of history background, which is right here. It tells you, uh, you know, the potential for negotiation with um, the enemy. Um, but in this case, it's the Americans. So you're actually going to be fighting your own continental infantry, which is a dilemma. And you'll get 2D plus 2 of them. So anywhere from 4 to 14 will appear by what you roll in 2 dice. So rolling 2 dice, and I rolled a 9, so there'd be 11 of them. So then you would take the counters out. Now they are, they have guns, and they have specific capabilities. So what you'll do is you'll roll randomly to determine what hexes they set up on. Tim always sets up in the middle. And so you get a soldier with uh, the bow, but it represents all periods of history. So there's a little bit of loss of, of historical ambiance, I guess, by having one set of silhouetted counters, either fire combat or melee combat, along with various monsters and so on and so forth that uh, will appear in the game, such as, as these here. Anyway, uh, you, you roll for them randomly, and as, as the player, your goal may be to eliminate some of the enemy forces, but you also need to conserve your ammunition and equipment. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to control the flux so that having done that, you can move on to the next battle and get yourself your next step closer to home. You can pick up some treasure along the way, which in this scenario I believe it was said was an American powder horn. Um, so you get a chance to collect some goodies along the way. And you expend your ammunition, and every time you run out of ammunition, you have to use um, some of your ammo. Now, I used a second track here to keep track of my other items in, in the quantities that I have. So I have 11 re, 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 uh, reloads of the M16, and I have, you know, three and five grenades, explosive versus the, the, the shock uh, or stun weapon, noisy flashbang. And then I have a, a few 357 uh, reloads for my 357 Magnum. I guess it can be dirty hairy of the, of the past. So anyway, you maneuver the map, you, you succeed in that battle, and then you get out of, successfully, if you manage to get out of that battle, you roll the dice again, and you see where you go. So the next time, direction four, um... Uh, distance of six so um, you go this way you go one two three four five six and I end up in at 378 on battle 11 uh, so battle 11 is Adrianople a great place and you do run into some Romans here sort of like the cover so indicates. So then, based on how your tra time travels go, you can end up going into the future time display, which I found was a lot less common than the past. It's a little more harder to implement um, in terms of special rules, but nothing that an experienced gamer can't handle. Assuming you don't die, and you can... Uh, complete enough missions to eventually roll less on uh, two dice than the number of missions you fought to that point. You, ha in this case, t if you rolled a two, you, you could get back pretty quickly uh, if rolled early on. And so, if that happened during the, like the fifth battle, uh, and you rolled a two, then you could go back to N Vietnam, which is not as desirable a place as as many of these battles here that are represented. So, uh, within the, the tracks and displays, you have 72 unique battles, which is rather interesting. And because the number and variability of the forces that you run into, where, where they sit up, uh, and what happens, it's a highly variable game and plays very differently. So I've played sometimes where 
it's a, a cakewalk, a snap. I just basically mow everybody down and take my time and go back to Vietnam and win the game. Other times, I got slaughtered fairly quickly. Now, there are some meaningful decisions in the game. Uh, you know, tactically how to deploy, we throw grenades, flashbangs. You negotiate with the enemy using an optional roll to try and, in essence, maybe buy them off. Um, or give them some loot, you know, or, or something along those lines. You know, you could rationalize it as, as any way you'd like. And go on to the next battle and, and hopefully home. Now this is this was an arrow from SPI around 1980 where I always felt that they were really firing on all cylinders and they were doing a lot of good work. And this scenario, this map, or this game I should say, came out unexpectedly and I looked at it and I said, I gotta have it. And it's something that's been in my my collection ever since. It's interesting to see so many other games have come and gone, but this basic simple game with less than stellar graphics by today's standards. The encounters by today's standards, very wordy rules by today's standards, still holds up and does seem to have a fair amount of interest considering that the game is going on 40 years old. Uh, if you can pick up a copy, borrow a friend's copy, uh, you can download some of uh, you know a, a new revised map, a bigger map, a couple extra uh, components that will make your game a little more user friendly by today's standards. Do so. I encourage you to give it a shot. Um, you know, it, it's one of those desert island games, I suppose. A game that, while nothing fancy graphically or, um, you know, stylistically, you know, or, or, or component-wise great, um, there's just some kind of magic, you know, being able to, in one game, to, to fight in potentially up to 70, well, you wouldn't in one game, but you have the potential of 72 battles. Um, rather unique. And it's an ideal solitaire game. It's a game that while you can play multiplayer, I would just rather sit down, set it up, play solitaire when you've got, you know, an under an hour of time to play. Just set it up and then just continue playing along. And, um, you know, it's, it's simple enough. You can not note, you know, your location, set it back up again to continue your campaign. Sometimes it can be quick. Sometimes it can take a long time. So anyway... Um, definitely this game is, is worth looking into. Uh, you can read more about it on Board Game Geek. And, um, anyway, this has been Blast Pop. Uh, please like, subscribe, and comment below. Bye.